well, Peggy, I, we don't want to, you know, you tire don't you. Do that to me. No, we don't want to tire <laughs> you. But oh, what, yeah. can I ask one last question? You can ask all your life. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I know Margaret Hamilton had a recurring role on Ethel and Albert. Can you tell us what it was like working with her? It was just fine. Yeah. Margaret was fine. We were great friends. And then there's one thing about actors, they, and they can't help it. Maggie called me. We spent. The, she never did anything between that making the Wizard of Oz and doing my show, and the whole two or three years, she would say every time we'd go anywhere, I don't know what I would do with the call. Call me Peggy. About Peggy, she says it's marvelous. I will work on her show, and I paid her the same thing I gave myself. I couldn't afford really what she was worth because she was worth it to be on my show, and I liked her. Uh -huh. and we got along just fine. She moved down to where she lived and Gramercy Park to be near me. And we had a Sunday night, we'd have a Sunday night, like the Players Club for women, except across the street the Players Club was having it for men. And uh, I stopped one time and uh, had to dr drop a script offer to Lilla Bankhead, and she had bare feet and an old icky house dress, and she said, I'm scrubbing the kitchen floor, come on in. <laughs> and I said, I said, I can't. I gotta get home and get a script finished or start or finish or something like that. And uh, but I always just come on now, take take five. So she, I didn't know her at all. She's very sweet, very funny. And I said, My God, you must have somebody. I look. Here was a tub. It was filled with glads, and it was just enormous. And I said, Boy, somebody really loves you. No, she said, It's the Brooklyn Gas Company. They're so afraid I'm going to screw up their commercial tomorrow. And then she was going to the coast. And uh, I said, What are you going to do with the flowers? Yes, I was worried about that. I said, Well, we'll take care of Maggie and I'll take care of me. She lives just around the corner. I said, Get them over to us. Some guy to carry them over. And we'll, uh, we'll take care of them until you get back. Oh, I said, That's fine. I said, And then when you get back, come on over. Because we have a Sunday night where actresses in the area could come. And everybody brought something. It was mm -hmm. a big thing in Maggie's apartment at 12, but at 20. Mildred Natwick also came over there. And uh, so she said, fine, fine. And then the night she came, Maggie was so mad because somebody had brought flowers that were not in a vase. And Maggie also had a fit about that because she had to get off the ladder, special ladder, oh, get, get all the way up because her apartment high ceilings and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that was quite an occasion like that. But Maggie did something to me that was typical I paid her the same because I could afford. She, I could afford, and I whether you're on it or not, oh, you will yeah. get this much. You said uh -huh. I can't remember six hundred fifty or something like that. She was worth that to me, but what she did was so strange. She didn't. I'd say you're on one or you're on three or something like that, and we could record by that time. You see, okay. one day, so we didn't have to worry about that. And she called me and said, "Am I on any of them?" She was always on some. I said, yes, you're on seven of them out of the ten, two weeks. And she said, well, I just wonder, I, Meg, I, Peggy, I don't think we can go on with this arrangement. I said, what's the matter? Well, United States Steel wants me out on the coast to do a commercial, and they'll give me $1,000. And uh, <laughs> once in my life, kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. I said, well, if it means that much to you, why go on and go? Mm -hmm. Go and get your thousand dollars, and then I'll see you when you get back. But I thought really wanted to kill her because that meant I had to make seven new shows, mm -hmm. right? In one yeah, weekend. to take her character out. And well, no, I didn't do that. Oh. I didn't want to cut off my nose to spite my face. No, I mean you had to redo a script without her I, in it. I couldn't because if I used you just her, saved them. I, you saved the script. Oh, sure. Get back. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, of course. I think I did that. I don't remember anything about it. I really except that I thought I don't. I couldn't figure out where where's friendship and where does it start and where does it end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and she was terrible to me. It uh, then she had well, Maggie slipped on a squirrel. <laughs> on a squirrel? <laughs> yes, she did. She had. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. She was. She stepped out. She had a, a cottage in, up in Maine, and she stepped outdoors and she stepped on a squirrel's tail, and the squirrel made her slip, and she hurt her back. Mm -hmm. 
and it really hurt, and she shrunk, she really, boom. And it affected her on top of that. And, you know, uh, I Didn't can't you meet, you met, you met up I, somewhere, I can't remember what it was. Well, was it wasn't that, it was, she had done the, this is apropos nothing that I'm talking about, we're still working, and uh, she just began, well, she wanted to bash some girl over the head with a cast iron fry pan, it's true the pan was small, but that hurt, <laughs> you know, and the, and, and the, she didn't like it, so. You mean it started what? affecting her mentally after oh, the fall? Yeah, yeah, I did. see. Oh, I okay. Did, really, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll read translate for me. I will. <laughs> and she did come back, and I didn't. I didn't say anything. Just happened. But she, and then, oh, oh, Batulula, she came back from Hollywood, and uh, she came over the bar. Two men carrying this, like a wash, like a mm -hmm. you know, like this guy. A cast iron. Full of the flowers. Yeah. And three, four dozen. They were huge. And she splashed water on Maggie's floor. Yeah. And Maggie got mad. And so she said, hate these people. Bring your flowers. They're going to bring the flowers. When they're coming for dinner, they should be, by God, bring, bring it in a vase, bring it in a plant, something like that. Don't bring flowers. I got to go outside and get the ladder. And all the time, Tulu was standing there. And so I was sure to go on into the living room where the people were and everybody was listening. And and Maggie then somebody went out and got the ladder. Oh, I was sent them out for the ladder and the ladder came in and the upshot, I cannot remember all the details, got it written up somewhere, and she fell. Uh -huh. And she didn't hurt herself, but she got really mad and told the boy off who had nothing to do with it and there was water on her face. And I, I, I got her into the dressing, into her bedroom, and asked her to behave herself, you know. But this kind of awkward. There was I thought so she was rude to you years oh, later. Oh something yes. Too. Then on her 80th birthday, on her 80th birthday, they called me and said, "Could I come up to her, her 80th birthday to chat to uh, Sardis?" Oh Christ! I got to get the bus up. Well. Yeah, I thought I'd better do that. And I did, and I got in, she didn't know me. And uh, they were all sitting at tables and so on. I walked over to where she was. I said, hi, Maggie. And her son said, it's Peg, honey. Peg, mother. Oh, who? Peg, you know, Peg Lynch. And she didn't know me. She didn't know uh -huh. uh, who was the one who had the geranium dropped on her head. Well, I don't know. Remember. Arlene Francis, a geranium dropped off and oh. killed a woman down on the street, you know, one time. Oh. Yeah. It was her. She didn't know her either. But that wasn't being rude to you. She just no, didn't no, know no. you. I thought she was rude to you some She day. was. Oh. The, the same day. Oh. So then he at the, the end, and I looked over at someone and said, who's that woman? Who is that in the pink suit? She looked so from every, It was Lorraine? No. Loretta Young. No. No, it was not. She was very big and had a pink suit on her hair. hair. What does she do? Sing? Act? Act. Well, I don't know, huh. Mama. Well, I don't either, but she was... Well, the point... Well, the point is what I was talking about. Uh, Maggie got... They, they were going around to say goodbye to everybody and thanks for coming. And then Pat Maggie showed up with her son and she said... And uh, he said, well, say goodbye to Peg. Oh, there you are. She said, well, you certainly got me for nothing. I was certainly a lot more than I, you should have paid me a lot more than you did. And loud. <laughs> oh. I could be heard over an area like this, with all with actors and so on. I said, oh, I'm sorry, but I did the best I could. And I, well, it certainly wasn't very good, I'll tell you that. Oh. And her son was so embarrassed, he could, okay. they couldn't get, get her loose because she had, dug her claws in <laughs> and she wasn't about to be budged and she was just whipping me oh, once dear. I mean, you know thought oh, I didn't pay her at all yeah but was that d her dementia speaking rather than really uh, I, I hope, hope so, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sad and, uh, that is the first time that well she got so bad we had I'd been with her when she bought the apartment and the apartment was the oldest cooperative building in New York 
and the, 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 the boards, the floors were like this, and the elevator was the size of half of this room with an old man who I think mm -hmm. came with the elevator. <laughs> and it was up yeah, it was a hand-pulled hand elevator. Hand -pulled elevator. elevator. Oh, wow. Really gorgeous. Boy, when you went shopping from Maggie's place, you didn't forget anything. It was a, you know, it was a voyage, a trip. I was scared to ask him to get do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow... She, yeah, she. At the time she bopped the, the nurse on the head, she got carted off to New Rochelle and a pat as well. Mm. Oh. So she really was bad up. But the but the slipping on the squirrel did it. I think. Yeah. And yeah. they came home one time, and uh, she had they had a, her son and his wife had her uh, that room there, and she shared the bathroom with Maggie, whom she adored, her little granddaughter. She wrote her a nasty little, how dare you use my bathroom, stay out, oh, keep your door. Yeah. yeah, it was terrible. She yeah, that's too bad. bad. And then they got some for her, just before she died. She got I think it's because she was trying to melt ice cream by oh, putting yes. it on the burner. Yeah, on the she stove. Put, they came in the back door, she was baby, <laughs> babysitting. <laughs> babysitting. Babysitting, and she was, put, put the ice cream on the stove. The gas stove, the, the paper container, you know. Yeah. She, well, it was hard. Couldn't get, even get a spoon in it, you know. <laughs> dear, oh dear. <laughs> well, it's been some experiences you can't write about. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she was really a little... Oh, she, do you remember, I remember...